Wel, hier is een baie interessante story. Ons het nou een visual wat kom en Dien ken hier die dans, is die pa van sy hand. Ek weg gaan omdoppe met een met de valko, ek het nie idee wat om te doen is van nie. Ek het bykie navorsing gedoen, maar ek wil nie te veel sê nie. Ek gaan net kyk wat hy doen, want hy weet wat hy doen is. liever werk naar Seni. Ons is hier zo bij die Nijl. En wat ik ga doen is, ik ga met twee stokken beginnen. En ik ga die vis eerst zoeken. Het lijkt mij ook die story met een wijs van mij. Dat is weer 50, 60 meter. Zo een wobbelijkste daar die die loop van die dag en ik zal daar een beetje try. En dan die rest. Het lijkt mij een beetje verder, 80 naar 90 toe. Zo gaan we een beetje daar gaan toetsen en zien we aan. Dan heb je de secret weapon vandaag. En dan gaan we het niet meer werken met die jongen. Ik wil eerst zien of ik van mij ga werken. Dus we hebben het paar van jullie samen gedaan. Die vissen hier, die dames is groot vissen. En die gaan niet zo. Als je groot vissen vangt, dan kan je natuurlijk voorkomen op je gewig. Die tempo, hopelijk, is gaan een goede tempo wees. Maar gaan hier die pellets in mijn voer zitten. Dat is baie hoer proteïne pellets. Dat is zout in, dat is mineralen en dat is allerhande goedjes. Lekker ga je een PC binnen en mino assets, alles. En dan gaan het in mijn voer in mijn en dan gaan we daar op die bodem gaan lee en hopelijk die grootvisse lok en die grootvisse daar vir ons hou die die loop van die dag dan blij stil maar om die verwerking te sien hierdie venue is daar een beperking op lijndukte so ek moet maar my 7 pond lijnkies afval en ander spoel opzit want die beperking is punt 2,5 so ek gaan my 10 pond lijne op so Let us see what the hypersensor is. This is a real, natural thing. So, I reckon with a big carp, it's always good to see the lump of nuggets in the food. I don't know if it's going to be good or not. But I'm going to put the lump in. I think it's important to put it on the hook. But the food can do it. We gaan zeker maken dat ik genoeg mee gaat mee voor. Maar die grote vraag is waar is die vis en wat er afstanden ons moet ingaan. En ik heb niet een idee niet. Zo wat ik nou gedaan heb, ik heb min of meer gezien wat die doen. Maar hij is beetje skyly. Als ik kijk naar zij, zij pinnen is wel eens niet vijf meter niet. Zo is een of ander ander snaakse afstand. Zo kan je rechtig uitvigeren wat er afstanden gaan ingaan. Maar ik heb het gezien naar drijfvis en ik heb dat gegooid. Hier is daar so'n groot karp wat nou gespring. So, die afstand waar die groot karp spring, is een van die plekke waar ek gaan, ek het daar gegooi, en ek gaan hem nou in uitmeet om te sien wat het is. En so gaan een stok bykie nader en een stok verder. Ek sien nie so in die middel tussen ons is hulle op die typische 80 meter, maar aan die ander kant was hulle nader. So gaan gau kyk wat het ek gegooi, so kom ons kyk gau wat is het. Dat is 10. So, dit is precies 52 meter is die nabuistok. So dit gaan 52 wees en die ander ene denk ek 85. Ok, so die plan was die plan was om om daar 52 en 85 te doen. Had ek hierdie katrol vat en ek meet om uit te sê op 82 in. Toe dacht ek wel, ek moet seker een rede wees daarvoor. So ek het geen wetenskapelike bewys hoe kom ek met 85 wees nie so. En nie man, as my getrol op 82 is, ons heb 82. Ek is al even een bykie bekommerd dat hy ingehaak is, so ek sal dit net vir die begin doen, en dan sal ek die lijn merk. Want ek denk die groter vis van die lokpak slaag hier op die inhaak.
Daar is niks beter of geen beter plek om te wees als die winter net begin en dit bij die water niet. Zo so ons kan je hier op Mokopani uh, bij een lekker plek. En ons praat van die Nijl, maar het heeft niks met krokodillen in Egypte en enig iets anders eruit te waaien. Dit is een specifieke plek hier nabij Mokopani en het wordt genoemd die Nijl Biodiversity Offset Area. En Dien en Christopher kan je hier samen met ons, of ik denk ons kan je hier samen met hulle. Dien, dank je voor jou, um, jou moeite om voor ons hier zo so een lekker setup te doen. Ach, oh, Fanny, you know, it's such a pleasure to have you guys out here and just to introduce the audience yet again. I think they may have visited the Nile in the past, but it's just such an amazing uh, venue to come to, such a prestigious uh, place to come to. I was here early this morning when the sun came up and I just remembered how awesome and blessed we are to have a venue like this. Um, Dean, what can we expect from today? We, we're just going to have a, a nice session, we're going to fish, um, we don't, we, we're not going to, I'm not going to tell you what the prize is for the for winning the session, but um, in any case, what can we expect? We, we're going to fish, I don't know this place, what can we expect more or less? Look, are we, are we going to catch nice fish, are we going to catch lots, are we going to catch anything? Yeah, you know, Vanna, that's that's always a, a tough one. So, first and foremost, we're at the water. So I think we, we, we've already won. Yeah. Okay. But from a, a fish species perspective, um, we have carp, we have barbel, and we have tilapia. Um, biggest carp in in the venue that we know about at the moment is just over 20 kilos. Um, I would say a good average size fish today is going to be plus three up to about eight kilos in terms of carp. We've got mirror carp, uh, we've got the common carp, and then we've also got ghosties, beautiful ghosties uh, in the venue. The cats, surprisingly enough, are still very active. Uh, we, which and, might um, mean that the tilapia might also still Why Do you think we're going to catch a blue? We, we may, we may. If you are going to get a blue, I wouldn't be surprised if it's one and a half to two kilos for this time of the year. I think the smaller blues have already taken shelter in, in the reeds and, you know, just trying to keep warm uh, wherever they are. Uh, as I say, the cats are also very active at the moment, so don't be surprised if you land up catching a cat on, on your normal rigs, even though you're not fishing for it. And uh, just bear in mind, because they're big up to 20 kilos, um, you may get one on camera today, 15 or 16 kilos. Oh, okay. And uh, hang on for dear life with your 0.25 line, <laughs> because they are turbocharged in this venue. That, that's something that's interesting as well, in terms of the rules of the Nile, is that uh, no line less than 0.25 millimeter and uh, only one hook traces. So, we gaan net een een hook op die strop gebruik en ons gaan lekker duklijn gebruik. Het beteken ek kan nie verder gooi as 50 meter met daai duklijn nie. Um, so dis wat ons gaan doen. Christopher, jy uh, ken ook hierdie plek lekker en uh, vir hierdie eerste sessie het jy die beste job van allemaal. Jy gaan achter oor sit en jy gaan met ons camera gesels en live commentary lewe. Ja. Yeah. Hoe ken jy die plek? Hoe hou jy van hom? No, I really, really enjoy the venue. Um, it's amazing to see how much it's developed. You know, I started fishing here as a youngster. The first time I ever came here with my dad, I was probably about 13 or 14 years old. Then there were no swims. We waded out into the water about waist deep, wow. fishing in front of the reeds. Um, and that time we used to catch plenty of fish between two and three kilos, but the bigger fish weren't around yet. And through proper management over time, we've, we've really seen the average weight of the fish pick up. So I would expect to see pretty decent bags coming out here today. Okay, well, we're going to have a, a, a small competition. Dean, just something that he said. Eh? He said when he was a youngster. I think he's still a bloody youngster. <laughs> when, when, when he's speaking to <laughs> miesters, you know. <laughs> that I understand. Okay, we're going to fish a lot of fun. We're going to have a 3-hour session. It's 3-hour and 10 minutes what we have. We're going to have a lot of fish to fish. We're going to see who we're going to fish. Uh, Um, ek gaan een beetje afkijk. Ik zie al klaar allerhande snaakse goed al wat, uh, wat voor mij baie interessant is. Breinbolle en allerhande ander goed. So, ons gaan kijken wat ons gevang kan krijgen. En ek gaan rechtig proberen om hierdie autopie te wen. Um, ons gaan werk volgens een puntenstelsel. Normale uh, competerende puntenstelsel. Ons gaan 10 punten per vis en uh, 5 punte, uh, 10 punten per kilogram en 5 punten per vis al. Dat is nog een reel wat hulle hier het, um, die grootvis boe 3 kilogram um, mag nie in die kiep net ingaan nie. So julle sal sien, hulle sal in een karpsak ingaan as ons van hulle vang uh, en ons gaan hulle net vir een uur of twee hou, totdat ons aan die einde van die sessie hulle weeg. Um, 
Dat is nog een reel wat mij interessant was dien. Um, Nautilus net zo niet. Correct. Zo so, geen geknoopte net in. Ja. Oké, okay, dit is ook een interessant reel. En alles wat we hier doen, gaan we vis bewaren. Um, op die swim het ons ook een kruidel, so elke vis wat geland wordt, niks wordt op die grond neergezet nie. Ek moet vir julle 12 uit 10 gee vir fish care en bewaring en so. En dit wat julle doen by die venues is ongelooflik. Maar nou ja, nou het ons genoeg nonsens ons gepraat, kom ons van vis. Dana, just before we go off, one quick question. I don't know. Three, three hours, how many kilos do you think you can get? And I just remind you, it's the 25th of May. 25th of May, so it's cold. So if, if I look at, at the Bloemhof and uh, Waldam results for the past weekend, um, they caught like 45 fish, 40 kilos uh, in eight hours um, at Bloemhof at the slip, which was quite on. So if we say uh, three hours, uh, so we bring it up to 18, 20, 20 kilo bag. And because it's a good venue and I see a lot of fish around, maybe around 30, 35 kilos for a three hour session. I think that would be an awesome outcome for a three hour session in the middle of May. So let's see how it goes. Good luck. Okay, cheers. Cool. And, and whoever wins this session doesn't make food tonight. Uh, no, I'm making the burgers <laughs> tonight. I'm making the burgers. So <laughs> I'm not going to lose this. So, so oh, I tried that one. bezig met om te die ander loop en uh, toe ek het eindelijk klaar is het in daar voor en toe kom op telkens af wel, wow, ek was aangewees, ek het welke bykie hard geslaan voor, dat is hoe ver hierin is ook weer op die dieperlijn wat ek wat nie gevoel het ek hoop die ingang van my voer op die dieperlijn ek probeer om so bykie na sy kant uit te vis maar het werk hier echter die lijn. Het is moeilijk, want die uh, line management is moeilijk. Die wind komt van rechts naar links. En dit betekent mijn bak gaan baie ver oor. So, ek kan nie nabij en ontvies nie, want dan ben my bak van my lijn te ver oor. Dan gooi jy binnen in die bak van sy kost. So, dit is een beetje dus nie meer. So, ek moet maar aan die rechterkant op my eie vind. nog als een stille hierdie, want um, ons het nou vier visse aan. Um, so ons het vier stokke met vier vis. En nou gaan we een kwartere vol af, he. Het zijn een verloor en ik weet niet of mijn en of anders niet. Oh, ik heb ook met mijn bikini af. Vang hem niet. Hallo, mij. Ja. Oké, okay, het swimming closer, hè?
Egipto. ¿Sí? Cool guys, all right, we're coming towards the, the end of our session at the moment. Uh, if I check it out here, they've still got 40 minutes to go. I must say I'm really excited to see, to see what the results are going to be. Uh, the guy's been catching a good number of very, very nice sized fish, good numbers. So I think we're going to exceed our expectation in terms of our uh, expectations at the start of the session. But uh, yeah, it's really just been such a wonderful day so far. The wind is, is picking up. Uh, the fish are, are getting a lot of oxygen into the water, which is really increasing their bite rate and they're fighting really hard, which is great. Uh, yeah, let's keep an eye and see how the, the rest of the session goes. We'll keep you guys updated. For my part, I no deer. Okay guys, so we've got a couple of minutes to go, probably about 10 minutes or so uh, until the end of the little short match. Uh, the, the pace has been picking up, the guys have really been hammering it. Uh, I'm expecting somewhere around 15 to 20 fish to, to win. Uh, so yeah, pretty eager to get those bags out uh, to show you guys what these guys have done. But wow, what a awesome session. Um, the average fish weight has also been really quite something good number of fish over four kilos or so um, in terms of strategy they've done fairly similar approaches um, other than obviously the feed which we we know is a little bit different um, for my dad versus Wagner so that's definitely something I'll, I'll suggest to Wagner he considers changing in the next session uh, because the the true feed pellets definitely have been bringing a, a bigger size average fish I believe and I think they've also bought more numbers um, but that has held himself up very well he's done unbelievably in this session um, so I'm really eager to to see what's going to happen in the next session I think I'm gonna have my hands full all right something else that I've noticed is Vadner has been really scallum. I've, I've noticed as the session goes on it looks like his balls his feed he gets a little bit darker and darker in color I'm sure that he's stolen some of those true feed pellets or some of that feed enhancer, uh, either from my dad or he scratched it out somewhere here in one of the boxes. It's a naughty bugger. No wonder his catch rate's been picking up. Nou, dit was nou een baie interessante sessie. Ons het net drie ure gehengel. Um, ek het 16 vis gehad, bijkans 50 kilo's. Maar Dien het 50% meer gehad. Hy het 18 vis gehad, maar 73 kg. Dien, that's, that's significant. Um, the size of the fish that you caught was significantly bigger. Yeah. Well done. Thank Great you. job. <laughs> Great job. But I'm still brying the burgers. You're still brying the burgers. Yes. <laughs> I will, I will do all the, um, all the skivvy work. I will you all on the That's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that was, that was quite lekker geweest. Um, 
Nou, ek het so, so bykie stout gewees en ek so paar goed by jou gesteel, toe ek sien jy, jy vies beter as ek, um, en meer vis, ek, uh, ek dink, in termen van die, die analyse van waar ons gevis het, het my die een stok heel wat dieper gewengel, maar jy het toch baie groot vis op die naalder ene gengel, wat in min of meer die sellerlijn was, as wat ek was so. In die laaste uur, 45 minuut, het ek so paar bolle gesteel, wat onder jou kas het, en hulle is so ingewerk in my voel, en het een dadelijke uh, verandering teweeggebring. Maar ek het nie meer vis gevang nie, um, so ek moet nou nog kyk na wat, wat nou daar verkeerd gegaan. Maar daai breinvoer, vertel ons bietjie daarvan, wat is dit en wat maak dit anders? Sjoe, Werne, jy, jy vang my nou redelijk omkant, um, in die opzicht dat ek in Engels praat. Dat is fijn, gooi om nie. 100% dankie. So, I, I think first and foremost, when you, you want to look at the venue like this, uh, where big fish are available, big fish are smart. When I say they're smart, they know what good food is. And um, so we, we've been working on uh, uh, some products for some time now, trying to say, well, how do we entice bigger fish more consistently uh, relative to the, the smaller fish? And you saw the tempo is the same. Yeah. It's just literally sorting the bigger ones out yeah. from, from the smaller ones. Yeah, 16 fish, 18, 18 fish, but 24 kilos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and when you were just saying that now, sort of reflecting quickly, 73 kilos in three hours. I mean, that's like 100 and potentially 160, 170 kilos yeah. in, in eight hours. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a good bag. Uh, nothing spectacular for this venue. It's pretty normal nowadays if you're doing things right here. So what, first and foremost, what, what we do is, um, it, it is a product, it's two of them. So the one we call a, a feed enhancer, true feed feed enhancer. And then the other one is the pellet. Mm. So the, the feed enhancer is literally, it's already cooked. And it's important that people understand the, the cooking process for any fish food is very important as to how they can digest it or not. Um, whether they will pick up on all the, the minerals that we, we put in there, the vitamins that are in there, the amino acids that are in there, the salts that are in there, the, the proteins, nutrients. everything. Um, it's not just, you know, some people think, oh, it's a pellet. It's not just a pellet. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of work. Is, is that the same as the pellet just ground or is it a different product? Correct. So you once you've extruded the pellet, uh-huh. um, so in other words, it's been through the cooking process, we actually then take pellets and then we, we pulverize them. Okay. Okay, and you'll, Christopher will show you guys how to do that a little bit later and why, why it's done like that. So I think the first thing you picked up on, on today was that my feed was different. Mm. And um, as you can see, and I, I, I really don't mind what manufacturer of, of dry feed you use, whatever's your preference. What's important is, is that you get these two in combination into that. You can see it discolors the, the ball quite significantly. I think most people nowadays are putting a tin of koo or whatever yeah. else in, in the feed just to ensure that they keep the, the fish in the area for longer. Um, and then I don't know if we're going to be able to see on, on camera, but I think one thing that intrigued you today was the color combinations that I was fishing on, on the hook baits. Yes, the green, the green dough. I, I yeah. also stole it. Yeah, a bit I, of that. I, I noticed, I noticed, <laughs> but it, that, that was all good. It was all in the day's fun. Um, in, in principle, what we do in this venue is, you know, Fish can become, I don't want to say used to, but wary of, uh-huh. of uh, you know, certain bait types that are used on a, on a regular basis. And what I've started to notice of, of late, you can see it's a very big bait that I'm fishing with and it's quite a significant difference in color combinations. Uh, similarly on, on this one, um, also different color combinations that, that we're busy using. So your, your fish is predominantly attracted to the feed and then once he's at the feed, you want him to pick up on the hook baits. Now you can say, but why you've got a floaty on you? Well, in principle, there's silt on the bottom of this lake. And I'm not sure you probably picked yeah, up on, on that today. And um, what you do need to do is, this is not a pop-up bait. It's a critically balanced yeah. bait. So you just lift up easier when it's succeeding. Yeah. And you, I, you also passed a comment. You said, gee, I saw your hook links are very long. So here's, a, here's an interesting fun fact, and this is one of the things that I've picked up from doing the, the carp fishing that Christopher and I do, um, both also the monster carp fishing. Your comment at the end of the day when you saw my bag of fish, and it was seven kilos and six kilos and, mm. you know, um, per fish, when you look, and I call them the paddles, but when you look at the fish's two um, pectoral, pectoral fins, and they start to become literally the size of your hand, envision what happens when that fish is standing up on its head to eat and how far is the fish's mouth actually away from what he's trying to forage on. Hence why the, the long hook links. 
If you fish in a very short hook link, even if this is critically balanced, and the fish is sucking it up, it can't get to you, and you want something that's going to respond when they're standing above it, big fish standing above it and, and going for it, and then clearly it can get to the, the fish's mouth. What you'll also notice, the shorter you make the hook link, the smaller the fish are. I saw that. Fish. I fished with 12. Yeah. And it was significantly smaller fish. Yeah. So um, these are 18s, as, as you and I discussed. When we do boily fishing here, we go as much as 24, because then we're really, really going for, for big fish. And the, the, if you, again, just envision how that fish has to stand mm. over the bait mm. when he wants to uh, in, engulf it, that's what the tricks are. What, what I noticed when I um, grabbed a couple of those bombs below your box and I used them, um, the fish were on them quick. And I, I was getting indications and bites, and, but they weren't picking up the baits as quick. Yeah. Um, so I think, it's, it's my view, the, my ground weight bait was probably a bit hard. So I think as I come softer, make a lekker pop, softer. Football, how make how make you football? Is it softer? Is it? Yeah. So variants, er, ne, dit dit gebeur as jy wil stel, jy weet. Nee, nee, nee. Jy krijg nie, jy krijg nie al die volle feite op op baie slag. So, die bolle wat jy het van onder die tafel gevat het. Vanochtend toe ek begin het, het ek paar balle gemaakt en gevoer, so as jy gesien het, ne. En die balle was nog van vanochtend wat ook gebleid, so het redelijk hard geword. Jy het seker ook opgeleid, ek heng al met die klein sprinkie. So ek heng al met die wekkie, maar die sprinkie. As jy jou hand in my voer emmer gedruk het, wanneer jy jou voer aanmaak met hierdie goed, hy word half sponsorig. Ek wil nie sê hy is pap nie, maar hy is sag. Spongy, soft. Ja, en you actually need the little spring, just to help you to present it. So, what I really want to do is, I want it down there, the fish must bump it once or twice and it must be open. You saw the bite tempo can be down as low as one minute in some cases. Um, and then the, the bait must be available to, to be eaten. Okay. As soon as you get those, and I was watching your bites, as soon as you get those bites where they keep bumping, bumping, they're actually trying to break yes. the wall down. Because they want to eat it, because that's correct. what they're after. That's correct. So if there's nothing to eat, they'll pick up these, and, and yeah. especially with this um, uh, green piece of dough. Yeah. The other difference is, um, I fished, I reasoned, and I looked at the Romania results and all of that, and oh, there's big fish here, I was probably going to go bigger, um, baits so i used big floaties um and it didn't necessarily work better yeah so i i noticed um this morning you and i sort of had a brief discussion when i saw those floaties and i thought well you you're onto a good plan there eh? but i think what tends to happen is if you match the the big floaty with a big hook and a big chunk of dough you'll still present a critically balanced bait. Mm. But I think what people tend to do is they, they tend to still fish a smaller hook with a big floaty and then it becomes a popped up bait. Uh, and you know... That's the difference. Yeah. I, I think so. If you looked at the water colour, and again, as I've indicated, there's silt on the bottom, and if the fish are down there and they're busy feeding and there's fins and everything going around, I think that water becomes quite murky, so they rather hone in on, on the smell. The other thing, uh, Verna, that, that you did see me do, and um, I've just refilled the, the bottle now, but you saw I was totally, totally drenching. I saw it my, was covered. My bait with, with Sino One. So um, it would run down onto the, the hook I've, bait. I've seen it. I've and seen it with, the, you see the little droplets. Yeah. What I like about the, the Sino One always is it's a savory bait. Mm. And when I say savory, it's not as in fish but it says in spicy savory. Mm. So if you taste it, it'll actually give you a bit of a burn. And I've for years and years advocated, I've actually been producing Sino One now for over 33 years that it's been on the market. And um, I advocate you always catch bigger fish on Sino One. Why? Because the smaller fish, once they start getting into that area, it's almost like a chili bite mm. that it gives you. And I, I think they don't enjoy it where the bigger fish actually do enjoy it. But yeah, there's no, there's no real tricks to that, Vanna. I'm sure your session this afternoon is gonna go much, much better. I'm going to do a couple of changes um, and uh, I guess I'll have the privilege of having some of that in my ground bag. Ab absolutely. Um, what, what I would suggest Christopher do the second session, as I said, you know, I'm a master, I'm too old for this. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let, let Christopher and yourself in, enjoy the afternoon session and maybe when Christopher puts the, uh, the feed together for the afternoon session for yourself and himself, then you can just have a quick look out. Yeah, so, so that'll be interesting. So um, I, I guess what we do, we make one mix of ground bait, so we know there's no variation there. Absolutely. So if we start playing around with presentation, you can see, then you know it's not it's not the ground bait. Yeah. It's something else. Um, at least the ground bait will be the same. Um, 
you've just showed me that you've got some dough for me, so the yeah. bait's going to be the same. So I would really like to <coughs> sorry, <coughs> do a bit of an experiment with uh, one shorter hook length mm -hmm. and one longer one, and and see for myself exactly what the difference is. Because I'm, as an angler, I I like to fish closer to the to the rod, just as a matter of principle, mm -hmm. but. Having that and thinking about what you're saying about bigger fish, I want to see it. Yeah. I want to feel it. So, and I, I still maintain we haven't really caught big fish yet today. So we went up to over seven and a half kilos. This venue's got fish up to 20 kilos. Um, you know, and, and if you look at the size of, of the mouth of some of the carp that are mm. in here, they can literally engulf that entire bomb if they decided to, to come and hoover it. The, the barbel here are, are very, very big as well. And I was, I was surprised, I know you got one small barbel today, but mm. I was surprised that I never got barbel because often when I'm fishing with this because of the proteins that are in it. It actually picks up the bomb. Often I've mm. picked up nice big catfish mm. um, as, as a result of that. And clearly for the competitive angling that you and I were doing today, that's fine because yeah. the barbel count. Yeah. When you do the carp fishing, clearly the barbel don't count, but uh, we managed to sort that out. So in the carp fishing itself, in the herring fishing, I use the same combination in the, the PDA bag, but obviously the hook bait that is actually catching the fish is very, very different. Mm. You know, we're fishing boilies, but uh, we'll talk about that maybe tomorrow sometime. Okay, so let's go and have some fun, do a bit of experimenting. I'm going to show you what makes the difference between a shorter hook line and a longer hook line. And we're going to see a clear difference from lekker soften um, voerballen with this high protein food. Um, wat die vis duidelijk van hou uh, en wat hulle wil je. So, lekker zachte voetballen, ek het een paar springs. En um, ek gaan een beetje kyk hoe hard met die hoeken wat ons mee engel, hoe hard kan ons hulle trek. En hoe vinnig kan ons hulle inkry, want dit was nou nog wel een interessante deel geweest. So, kom ons gaan doen een, een middagsessie. Awesome, looking forward to it. Um, maybe, Chris, yes. one or two important um, uh, observations from your side, about what you saw. Watching, watching the two of you. Two. Yeah. What did, what did you learn? The one thing that I noticed was my dad fishing the longer rod. The one rod that was a, a bit further seemed to pay dividends. Yeah. So I think that might be something you could consider changing. Uh, the wind conditions are a bit better this afternoon. I know you were struggling with the bow management being so close yeah. to each other, etc. But I, I do think that is something that made a difference. Because for a time in the session, especially more in the beginning uh, of the session, uh, that was giving my dad a lot more bites yeah, than that longer we were getting. Yeah. So that, that's the one thing. The other thing I wanted to comment on was hook link length, but we've already got mm -hmm. to that one. Um, the feed obviously was different for most of the session. Uh, you did start pulling some moves towards <laughs> the end. <laughs> I had um, to do something. But, but I, I, I must say that um, in the end, that didn't make too much difference in my, um, in my, in my tempo. Um, I got big, uh, quicker bites because I didn't fine tune it. So I only got half of the answer. Mm -hmm. So now we'll hopefully get the full answer. No, for sure. Let's let's see how the next session goes. Come on, let's go from first.